everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. In the last part, we did a lot of side quests throughout Hyrule, and got a couple of hard containers in the process. And now we're going to be heading through the Castor Wilds. First off, I want to say I love the song in this area. This is actually one of the only games in the series that really remixes the main Zelda theme a lot, actually. Because I think like three or four themes actually haven't mixed into it. Anyway, there's something we want to do here in Castro Wilds, and that's find three specific types of one item. You need them to progress, and one of them is in this cave that I entered. In fact, it's in that chest, and... What? Oh, great. Hmm, so a guardian is protecting such treasure? Take care while fighting it. And he means that these guys are dark nuts, and they are no easy thing. There's multiple strategies you can use against them, be it just time your sword strikes well enough, dash through them if you can time a dash well. Or you can take the easy way out and place a bomb, have, have them over it while it explodes, and then cheap shot them. However, that is also the most time-consuming approach, unless you get a certain item later in the game. They take uh, four or five sword strikes to kill. Really? These guys, they're just time consuming more than anything. They don't, well, they hurt, obviously, because I was, I'm down like four hearts now. <laughs> but anyway, for beating him, we get the first Golden Kinstone. These are, Golden Kinstones are ones that are needed to continue on this main story of the game. There are three of them in Castro Wilds that we need to find in order to continue on. And you'll also find probably a couple of red, blue, or green ones along the way. But to get to the next one, we actually want to head northeast across that one platform and head down this vine to access the northwestern area of Castor Wilds. There's this cave right here which has a business scrub in it. Uh, I forget what he sells you on his own, but he, you can kinstone fuse with him to get a business scrub elsewhere that will actually sell kinstones for like 200 rupees, which is rather unyieldy, actually. Our next destination is actually this Minish portal right here. And oh great, lily pad. I don't like seeing you anymore, but we have to use you at least twice more. Not excluded, uh, made twice, is it? Uh, yeah, I, I can remember at least two other instances. So yeah, twice. Anyway, our goal is this hole right here, which has five blue bulldozers in it. Uh, I think the blue ones have more health than the red ones, I'm not quite sure of that. But for beating them, we get a big chest? That has a bow in it! Booyah! Now we can take out enemies from afar. Uh, it's a basic bow-type weapon. Yeah, you stand in the direction you want to fa- uh, You face the direction you want to fire and press the button to fire. S certain enemies can only be taken out by this item, though, so make sure you know that. Anyway, our next destination here is actually just to the uh, east where we were earlier. And you may have noticed this statue right here. Shoot it in the eye with an arrow. I believe in the American version there's actually a dialogue with Ezlo that happens right here, but it doesn't happen until the next one in this in this version for some reason. I also remember there being rocks on the ground. The pretty much putting it with the minimal this uh, maximum distance you could be to shoot its eye without it leaving the screen. Also, I love how there's suddenly swamp water, and then all of a sudden there's just normal water. I don't think that's how swamps work. Unless you're in Minecraft. We've got ropes all over the place here, nothing too big, but we also have a gravestone in here. 
Now, there's two things with this gravestone. We can only do one of them right now, and that is actually get this piece of heart, number 18. But this is Swiftblade the first dojo. We can't actually learn anything from him until we have all the other Tiger Scrolls in the game. Which means we only- which means we need seven. And we got another weird little obelisk thing. Uh, pushing down these boulders is essential to make shortcuts, though. You know, the Igors have always been kind of weird enemies. Now that is one nasty looking statue. That one eye has such an evil glower. Um, alrighty. Because remember for a fact the Igors were those green guys in Link to the Past, and in Majora's Mask, they're like one of the hardest enemies in the game, and they actually take four light arrows, which is a lot of light arrows for a normal enemy. But in this cave right here, we got the second Golden Kinstone piece. Only the first one's actually go to buy Dark Knight. All the other ones are just, you need to find a certain pathway to get to them. Like this last one where I actually forgot where it was, so I actually wandered around to find it. I really hope you guys can't hear my TV, although it's kind of weird considering what I'm watching. I'm actually watching the 2002 Spider-Man film for some reason. <laughs> Just saw it on Netflix randomly and said, why not? Anyway, with that Igor destroyed, we can now access the north... Uh, actually, no, this is the northeastern uh, northeastern region. I think I said northeastern earlier when that was northwestern. And now access this cave, which has the final golden kinstone piece. Well, I think I lost a frame there. <laughs> or at least it didn't recording. Hmm. Oh well. And with that, there's only one thing left to do here in the normal cast or wilds for now. We'll be doing much more stuff here later on. And that's if you follow all the wooden platforms, you have this Igor here I'm trying to shoot and somehow missing every subsequent shot, even though I'm in the exact same position I was before. And this one's completely optional to kill, actually. I think this is the only one you're, that's optional in the game. Oh, my first arrow drop. Yeah, now arrows will drop from enemies and such. That's pretty useful. And at the end of it, all we got is a red kinstone... blue kinstone piece, damn it. And then you'll suddenly see 20 rupees right below you, or 40 rather. These are red rupee like likes. So they'll su they'll uh, suck uh, 20 rupees at a time out from you. They're annoying. Though if you kill them, you get 20 rupees, which is always nice. Anyway, you may have noticed these little statues down here in the south uh, west. These are what you need the golden kinstones for. You need to fuse with them in order to progress in the game. And everyone will may actually jump up in the air somehow and slam down, causing that rock to break slightly more and more each time. And once all three are fro uh, frozen, fused, uh, we actually have access to the Wind Ruins. Another song that I really like. And before you do anything else in this area, we can bomb this wall to find, a believe, a blue kinstone piece. Yep. Blue kinstone. You might notice this guy blocking your way. Just walk into him and you'll unlock the first Armos Knight. These guys will only move after you touch them, and they take four slashes to kill at this point. However, as you notice, the last one had a white dot on its face. This one doesn't. That's because this one is actually turned off. I just bumped my mic. Sorry about that. Uh, you might notice that hole in the ground on the top left of the screen right about now. That's actually a miniature's house, and he'll tell you that uh, 
some of these guys aren't active, and you actually have to go into them as a Minish to activate them. There's also, I think, a red kinstone piece in there, but I don't really need that. And you might not have seen it because of the way that the screen scrolled, but beneath my hearts right now, there's actually a Minish doorway. That is actually a long-term goal for it. Well, not really long. It's actually going to be done within the next minute. And luckily, there's a Minish portal right here. Anyway, once you're a Minish, come over to the screen to the left, head down that vine, and then head down the second vine on the next screen to actually find the, uh, freaking doorway. Don't get knocked into pits. And you know, there's actually a piece of heart in here. That's the only reason we're here. Because, you know, pieces of heart are useful. And with that, we have piece of heart number 19. And with that, we're actually done in this little area. Uh, we still have to do something as a Minish up in that uh, area we were in before, so let's head on over and do that. Anyway, as a Minish, come into this Armos Knight, activate him, and then you have to walk all the way back through these areas of ropes to, oh, uh, I don't know, progress? Luckily, though, when you're big, you can actually, when you're normal-sized, rather, you can actually walk through the grass. When you're a Minish, you can't, which is kind of annoying. I actually really like the way the Armos Knights look in this game. Because, uh... Ever since Ocarina of Time, they always had this kind of stony look to them. Whereas in this one, they actually have a good metal look. And actually, they've had that stony look to the point where in the uh, Kira Himakawa A Link to the Past manga, they actually changed the way the first boss looked to that design of the Armos. Which is something I don't really like. Anyway, you may have noticed earlier that uh, Singular Armos Knight actually moved over to our exits. So, moved in the way of our exit, rather. So we actually have to get him out of the way. Defeating the other three will get you those 100 rupees and 50 shells. But much, you actually have to Minish Fuse ahead of time and actually do the reverse of what we've done before and turn this one off. I don't know how they coded that specific one to actually have its unique AI path, but I have seen crazier things done with AI. And we got a lot of ropes in this area. Even some of those hidden little termite enemies underneath the uh, rocks. Like that one. Pretty much uh, the Rin Ruins is one of the very few areas in the overworld where you have to kill all enemies to progress. I don't know why it is, but it is. But with that, we've actually made entered, um, entered, made it to a doorway, which is the entrance to the Fortress of Winds. But with that, I'm gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And next time on Let's Play Legend of Zelda: The Minish Cap, we'll be heading to the Fortress of Winds, the fourth dungeon in the game, and see what we can find here. See you guys then.